Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at CryptoMats and how you use them with RenderMan and Nuke. So we've got a scene here with three primitives and just a plane and a light. And what we want to do is create a CryptoMat that is going to automatically assign colors to all of the things in the scene so we can adjust them in Nuke after we do a batch render. So the first thing we want to do is go up to your render settings. Uh, head into the RenderMan tab. Under the Features tab, we want to go to the Sample Filters. Right-click on that and click Create Crypto Map. Now, if you want to delete this, you need to right-click here and click Delete. However, to start with, you'll get a warning and say you can't delete the last array member. That's because you need to create another array member first, and then you can go in and delete if you want. But for now, we'll just delete that new one that we don't need. Now, if you want to look at it, uh, the options, you just click the downstream button and you will get the uh, options in the attribute editor on the right here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the couple of things that you want to note are the file is always going to be called Cryptomat and it's always going to be separate from your beauty path. You can't integrate it like you can with other AOVs into your beauty EXR. Um, the F4 means that there's going to be four digits after the name so if you uh, so four frame padding numbers so if you've got you know a thousand frames obviously you want to have uh, a frame padding of four you could reduce it if you want all right so the first option you have after the file name is the manifest uh, basically i've always left this on header and it works fine uh, the next option is probably the most important option it determines how you want to assign colors to your uh, scenes for the cryptomat so for example if you do it by name um, when you select the objects in nuke it will show you the name you can do it by the object name you can do it by the material you can do it by an attribute if you went into the material and added a um, user attribute you could call it something else if you wish to um, if you use path it will give you the full outline of path so if this was under a group then um, or if it was a, a child then you'd see the parent child names in the path um, but for this one, we're just going to go by name. So in Nuke, you'll see cylinder, sphere, and cone when we select them using the CryptoMat node. The levels uh, will determine how many different IDs or coverage pairs are included in the CryptoMat. The default is six. Um, the accuracy is for when you've got objects essentially occupying the same pixel. Uh, this would happen where you might see something's out of focus if you rendered it uh, with a depth of field or if you've got motion blur you've got two objects uh, basically you know if you've got a blurry object in front of a still object then the accuracy may need, may need to be increased to cover both of those two IDs um, if you have the accuracy higher than the amount of um, IDs that are in the shot or render then it's not going to use any extra data to cover those um, however, if it's trying really hard to get all of that data in, then it's going to use more uh, data if you've got lots of, you know, complex motion blur and things happening like that. Generally, for most cases, uh, like myself, I have found that because I'm not using motion blur in the renderer itself, I do it all in post and nuke or, or fusion or whatever, um, it's not really come to be much of an issue. Um, but if you are rendering something like that, then you may need to increase the accuracy. This is my uh, best understanding from the docs, by the way. I, I, so far as what I can understand from the paragraph that they've written about it. I could be wrong, but um, that seems to be the way that it translates. All right, so now we're going to render that out. So we're just going to go to RenderMan and batch re render. Um, you don't need to do anything further on your AOVs. If you've just got your beauty, that is absolutely fine. It will still get the cryptomat pass from the sample filters uh, lobe there now before we jump into nuke i'm just going to let you show you where you uh, where you install the plugin to so if you've already downloaded it i'll leave the link in the description you need to go to users and then into your username and then into this dot nuke file and you can, also, you can see that i've already installed it that's pretty much all the files i think it comes with if you um, are copying the contents into your nuke directory and you find that there's an overwrite don't overwrite the file what you need to do is open it up uh, with notepad plus plus for example and append 
the uh, text that's in the file that you're importing into this. So and, uh, this is the file that it is going to install. Uh, this is the existing file and this is the text that I imported. So if you have something similar, then just make sure you just copy that text, chuck it at the bottom. The hashed um, text there will not be read um, by Python. That's just for notes. Now, as per usual, your renders will come into your images folder of your RenderMan directory in the most re recent render file. So you can just drag those into Nuke. And you'll see that I've got the beauty past and I've got the cryptomat. If I try and look at that, it won't work. It won't show you anything. All right. So now that we've installed the plugin, you can just type in crypto, tab hit crypto, and you get the cryptomat um, viewer, uh, at cryptomat node. So now if I hit one of the cryptomat, you can see that I've got these four different colors. Um, if we want to do, do a grade on the cone, we could just create a grade node, select the cryptomat node, select the, color, uh, the picker, hold down control, and click on the cone. And then you'll see that it's um, become selected. If I click any of the other things, you'll see that they're added to this list of mats. You can remove them by doing the uh, opposite. Use the picker remove, control click on them, and they'll be removed. You can look at it um, with the uh, with the edges or the colors. Usually, colors is probably the best way to do it. Um, I know some other renderers integrate it into the beauty render, and that will actually sort of show up as a highlight if you had um, none enabled, or if you were merging these. I guess it would work that way as well. Um, generally, I've I found that it's easy enough to navigate uh, this way, or you could also just do it this way look at the beauty render, and then you could still select that cylinder, for example, and you see it's come up there. So you don't necessarily be, have to be looking at the uh, Cryptomat node or Cryptomat uh, pass, but um, you do have to have the Cryptomat uh, node selected, obviously. So I'll deselect that cylinder, and I'll pipe the grade into the Cryptomat output. Now the um, mat output is going to create an alpha and we're just getting the RGBA alpha um, as our mask. So now when we, actually have I got that? Oh, now when we uh, grade, make sure that I'm actually looking through the right thing, you can see that we are just affecting the blue um, cone. Now if we wanted to do separate grades, you could just create another grade Cryptomat, and we'll run the, the mask into that. Select that one, and we'll select the cylinder this time, and then in the grade we'll make it, you know, whatever. And you can see that it's just affecting the cylinder now. You can do this with um, materials, as I said before, which is a good way if you've got a lot of the same material in a scene and you just want to select the material. Um, yeah, that's that's the basics of using the Cryptomat. Um, it's really good for very, very complex scenes. Um, here, I'll give you an example. Okay, so here's a much more complex scene that I've been working on recently. Um, here's the, <laughs> the beauty. Uh, it's not very beautiful. I just did this quickly at 16 samples because I don't have a uh, full render um, at the proper resolution at the moment but um so if you look at that there's quite a lot of things happening in the scene um but i can easily go in now and you know select whatever i want um however it would be good for me to go through my scene and just make sure all my names are, are of all my uh, objects are named uh better because at the moment they're not named particularly well because i've been a little bit lazy um that's it's on me, so don't be like me. Um, but yeah, so I'll be using a crypto mat for this scene. You'll also see that in, in certain instances, so for here there's a little amplifier, um, all the knobs here are the same color. They're all uh, one object, I've merged them all together. Um, however, I've got knobs here and they're all different colors because they're not the same object, or they're not the same uh, mesh, whereas you know some of these input jacks are the same mesh. So. Think about that sort of thing as well when you're determining um, how your crypto mat is going to work. Like, see, I've got all these 
keyboard keys, which you can sort of barely see there in the render. Um, all these keyboard keys that are different colors, they could all be the same color. Or I could run this as a mat ID because they all have the same material. So before you do your crypto mat, think about these sorts of things. Think about how you're going to be compositing, how you want to be able to edit your scene after you've rendered it and once you've got it into Nuke because there's a you know there's a lot of things that you might want to adjust after it afterwards and I know I definitely am going to be adjusting a lot of things after I've rendered this out of RenderMan. Anyway, so um, yeah, if you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you want to stay up to date with all these, make sure you, you click subscribe as I do a new tutorial basically every week for some sort of uh, 3D or CG program. If you want to see what this uh, mess here turns out like once I've fully rendered it, um, you can jump on my Instagram, uh, link in the description for that. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.